Music promotion is often confused with music marketing. And though they both work in tandem with each other, they are both two totally different beasts. And we've all been here before in this music industry, so we, we both get it. I'm, I'm talking, I'm preaching to the choir here. But in order to understand how promotion works so we can break it apart from marketing and you can actually have some success with it, tune in to today's episode of the Music Money Makeover Show. The first master key is your reach, and this has to deal with how loud your message is gonna be. So check it out. How much noise are you attempting to make in this specific market? The level of awareness you are creating is dependent upon how many times you get a chance to speak about your product, offering, or brand, as well as the magnitude of audience you speak to at that given moment, otherwise known as reach. Loudness determines if you will be heard or not. If it's too loud, people will be turned away. If it's not loud enough, people will ignore you. So you wanna set your loudness levels accordingly. So let, let me give you the equivalent of, based on the time right now, of what just happened with the Tommy Richmond joint. And, I, and the thing is, I even forgot the name of the record. I just know the Tommy Richmond joint, right? That's crazy. The campaign for that, it went so viral, it went so fast, and it was so loud so quickly for whatever it is they did, to make it go viral, that not even three to four weeks later, those who were at the initial boom of it, at right at the very beginning, that first week, were like, we've heard it, it's done. It hit radio so fast and it shot down so fast. Not only was the song short, but it got so loud so quick that people said, turn it off, that's enough, we, it's everywhere. I can't do it, turn it off. And that's what happens when your campaign is entirely too loud. Now, when your campaign is too soft, chances are you're in a small little area. If you're in the physical, you're doing something at a small little venue or something like that. Maybe you're playing at a local bar and the only people that know about you are the people that frequent this dive bar that you're playing in. Online, you might not have an audience, but you're relying on the algorithm of the platform that you're using. And because you don't have an audience, then your message is soft. So the promotional reach that you have is very small. Therefore, what your the, the 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 loudness levels are soft, if you will. Once you got that, then we can go into our next key here. How redundant, which is your repetition. Speaking about your product, offering, or brand to a large audience may bring a lot of awareness to people in that moment. But seeing something one time does not prompt people to act on your call to action. We're going to talk about about that in a little bit. These people need to see or hear your product, offering, or brand eight to 12 times just to become fully aware of you. So how many times will you repeat the same message in the market and how many times will the market allow you to repeat the same message? This is otherwise known as advertising. So you kind of got to gauge that. Again, if we're too loud, then the market is going to say we don't really want to hear it too much, right? Because if we're super loud, then we're gonna be overly redundant. But if we bring that level down just a little bit and we begin to pick up the redundancy, we have time to grow if that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to pour nitrous oxide onto our growth onto our growth campaign here and just shoot up, right? Because then people are like, oh, it's been here, we've seen it, it's gone. But if we allow time to pour on the nitrogen just a little bit at a time, let us grow, we get a chance to be a little bit more redundant. All right. And redundancy increases familiarity. Right. We get to know a little bit more about you each and every time you post more content and do and add a little bit more to your promotional run. So we got loudness, which is our reach. And then we got how redundant, which is our repetition. OK, now, because we are repetitiously putting out content, constantly saying, hey, check this out. Hey, check this out. We can move on to our next master key, which is how long? You probably already guessed that. How long is your time window? How long will the market allow you to advertise? And how long will people accept your advertisement campaign before it gets old? Timing is always of the essence. So anytime you plan on ramping up redundancy, just know that the people and the market itself will naturally deem something to be old at a certain point, And it will not be worth the effort to keep talking about it. More redundancy equals quicker aging. However, less redundancy may equal a nice slow burn or a disappointing fizzle out. How long will your promotional run last? The fizzle out comes from the lack of loudness, meaning the audience is too small 
And the more redundant you are with a small audience means that you're super loud with that small audience. So if you're right up in here and that's it, that's all you got, then you're super loud to those people and they've heard it enough. But if you increase that reach, right? And you, and you, and you have, and, and then you increase the repetition in it, you have a chance to go a little bit longer with it because everybody has to hear it before it's like, okay, we've, we've consumed it enough. We got it right. So we can increase our time window if we increase our reach. So if we diminish our reach, we have a short time window. If we increase our reach, we have a longer time window. And then on top of the increased reach, that means we can be more repetitious depending on how loud we want to fill up that reach. We might not fill up the entire amount of reach right there. We might just do this much, which allows us to get a longer time window to promote. So it's kind of like an equation here. This is how promotion is working. And these are all the factors that we're weighing, but we got to add another master key here. So let's keep going. How does it need to be said? And even though this is not a master key, I just wanted to put this in here. Every interest group doesn't respond to the same language. So it's important to speak about your product offering or brand in a way that relates to the audience. The easiest way to do this is just to be yourself, be authentically you and people will resonate with how you speak. If you be yourself, I mean, people will resonate with that. Sometimes you can hear my YouTube voice like I'm speaking right now, but then sometimes I get excited and you hear the Southern voice come out like, man, y'all, man, I can't understand what y'all saying. You know what I'm saying? Like it, that might come out. But sometimes when I want to actually get my point through, I like to speak a lot more clear. But you got to think about that when you're when you're actually speaking to your your market, if you will. That kind of dabbles in market. But let's add the final master key. This is how much the offer in many cases, an offer is just your general pricing for the product. Point zero zero three eight cents for streaming or ten to twenty five dollars for direct to consumer. And that twenty five dollars could be plus. It should be twenty five plus. However, Offers can increase value and produce an urgency to buy. Though offers are not always necessary, they certainly give a boost to income and word of mouth, so long as the original product itself is good. Offers can be in the form of discounts and introductory pricing for pre-orders or special edition products that are limited edition only. This urgency gives customers who already wanted to buy a notion to bring their purchase to the top of mind because people have been in the streaming state of mind for so long. We don't have to tell people how much and some people will stay in the streaming state of mind for quite some time. They don't care about how much music costs because they don't have to see the price. And for those that do have subscriptions to Spotify, you do see your price. However, the artist doesn't have to tell you, Hey, it costs this much because the only thing you know is that you're paying anywhere from 1199 to 1499 or $7.99 to $14.99 for your Spotify subscription, something like that. Um, and so therefore there's no say there's no, there's nothing you have to say, but if you're going direct to consumer, the price has to be posted. Now this overlaps and I don't want to jump the gun, but this does overlap with marketing our price. Okay. Let's keep going here. Another thing you need to be aware of is the call to action. Now you all have seen my call to action videos on YouTube. I recommend you go back and you watch this one right here uh, so that you can get a good grasp on what I'm saying about the call to action. At the end of the day, your goal is to sell some music. How can you do this? If you don't tell the audience how to get the product, what should they do? Listen, stream or buy where and when in, in some cases there may be a how this is usually where the ball is dropped by assuming the potential customer knows how to consume your music, depending on where you placed it. So if you're doing a physical run, how can I get the physical copies? Oh, go to such and such .com or go to target. If you're that big or go to the local record store, you see what I'm saying? How do we get your product? You got to tell me what to do. And if you don't tell me what to do, I can't go get your product. So if I need to stream it, you can, it's okay. People know that they can stream music now, but you should tell them, Hey, stream it now. It's out now. So go stream it on Spotify. It's okay. Even though you might sound old doing that, it's okay to tell people it's cool. It's just a, a, a good practice. And for those people who might not have also, you know, already gone to YouTube or Spotify to stream your stuff, that might have been the extra push that they needed to actually go do it. Or if you want them to go buy on, you know, the digital music on your website on even or on Bandcamp, you push them to that so that they go make it happen for you. Right. And, and that's that's really what we got to do in our promotional efforts. We can't just put the content out and forget about the call to action. And then all on top of that, we can't forget about the price because at the end of the day, we're running promotion to actually make some money. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Now, how explicit can your promotions be? The more you leave the audience that your product is directed to, the less explicit you can be. 
So if your product is explicit, you'll have a much more narrow market to appeal to, and you won't be able to gain the exposure you're looking for, for optimal growth. So you can only really promote in that market because the more explicit you are, or just being generally explicit, it can't, it doesn't have, it's, it doesn't have a maximum viability. And that's why clean versions of songs exist. So if you want to get access to a bigger market, make a clean version of your song and promote that. That's why many people who run YouTube ads and Spotify ads, they ask for clean versions because they cannot broadcast and promote on dirty versions. You see what I'm saying? So the more you move away from the audience that it was intended for, the less explicit you can be. Now, does this apply to any promotional campaign? Yes, it does. Why didn't you mention anything about content? Content is marketing material. Content is developed with the market in mind by defining what is required for it and what the market will accept for optimal consumption. Promotion is the broadcast of that content. The only place where content will overlap with the promotion of it is on your call to action and your offer pricing. So when I'm building content, the only thing that I'm thinking about when it comes to promotion is, okay, what are we going to do on the call to action? Are we going to say a price in here? And if we're not cool, so we're really only focused on call to action in the content. That's my promotional thought when I'm building the content. Other than that, I may give it the thought of, we want to make sure that this does well once it, once it gets repetitious, right? Or if I'm making the content, I'm like, okay, we want to make sure that when we repurpose this, it still has some lasting power. But we're not, when we're making content, we're thinking about appealing to the market more so than we're thinking about promotion. If you add these master keys of promotion to the master keys of music marketing that I gave you earlier in the month, then you will have an exceptional amount of cash flow coming in. And for those of you all who know my channel, if you're trying to build your record label or publishing company in 60 days or less with the step-by-step -step foolproof process, jump into the 60 day record label course beneath this video. You'll gain the ability to get real funding for those companies or that company. You'll also be able to prevent yourself from getting screwed contractually and you'll keep the middleman out of your pockets of those royalties that you're going to be able to get domestically and internationally. 100%. Now, if you're skeptical about this process, just grab the free stuff below. 10 major steps to increase your record labels profits. A free split sheet is included with that. And should I say a free mini course is included with that as well. Okay. But let's talk about the upside to this. Using these master keys will simplify, define, and enhance your promotional process to a point where it makes you look like a professional. This will allow your message to be heard by the right potential fans more economically than ever before. So if you use these keys, ultimately you will begin to see what it is you're trying to do gain traction because you understand what you're doing. You understand I'm not just posting content, but I understand I have a timeline. I also understand that things will fizzle out, right? I also understand that people will only be able to accept this music so much in one given timeline before they need to hear something else even if people are just getting to hear the music. So maybe I revisit this later, you know, maybe in three months from now or six months from now, I can begin to rerun some parts of the campaign again. You see what I'm saying? So it's just, once you understand these keys and you combine it with the master keys, you're winning. But not abiding by these master keys will make your promotional efforts suffer due to the lack of understanding direction, the direction of who needs to hear your promotional message and how many times they need to hear it. And this ultimately causes your campaign to falter. Promotion is more so an art. It's a dancing art with the attention of the public. And it's how do we get them in sync with our rhythm and our music, right? To, so that they consume it. And how do we get in sync with the time and the season so that people will want to hear it? And how do we appeal to the audience that will want to hear this and not to let's say the people who, who don't want to hear it, they're over here. That's a little bit of marketing mixed in. But again, you see how they can clash together. But it's all about dancing. Promotion is all about timing. And we want to do the dance with the time. Okay? So Music Money Makers, if you were confused with promotion and marketing and you really wanted some hardcore keys and steps and gems to make it work, you now have some. You can go forth and be great. Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, jump into the 60-day record label course, download the free stuff beneath this video, smash the like button, and I'll see you next time. Peace.